So, welcome to lecture number 3. In this lecture, I will discuss the various control schemes. Those are nowadays used for HBDC control. In the last term, we saw that we are having the approximately 3 characteristics. One is we are having the CC, another we are having the CEA control if it is working as an inverter mode. Then we are having this VD call, this if the voltage is very less and also we had this your that is called CIA that is a constant extinction angle control. So, any end of the invert uh, HVDC link or you can say converter circuit, we are having the four different parts that is a to be characterized and we have to use the control schemes for all these characteristics. This is valid for your rectifier end and also it is valid for your inverter end because whenever the power reversal is there, the rectifier should go in this mode as well. So, this is your four characteristic will be there. This is nothing but here you will say it is your alpha minimum control means it is just hitting the limit. Here this is your almost we are going to operate at the gamma minimum control. The basic here the constant control here we have to see, but here in this control once you are measuring this maintaining this minimum your beta is calculated. So, in overall I can say in whole control schemes we are very much concerned about the firing angle of the converters, means we want your alpha, means how these pulses are going to generate it and these pulses basically are giving given to the converter circuits and finally, we are getting the DC output. So, here as it is written the operation of CC or CEA here where we are deciding the basically the gate pulses of walls that is a very closely related and we will see the various schemes. Now, we require how to generate alpha to take care of the constant current control or the constant extension angle control or we are going to have the CIA control. No doubt we have another scheme here because if these controls are exhausted we are also going to use the OLTC that is on load tap changer control it is also exercise especially in the extreme conditions. So, this is your mechanical and whenever these are hitting at the limit we can go for the OLTC operation of rectifier end or we are going for your inverter end. In the literature we are having here I am going to talk about the first firing angle control that is why here it is written the firing angle whether it is a rectifier or it is inverter we have to have this alpha alpha if it is less than this 90 degree then it is rectifier more than that it is inverter. So, there are the two schemes are popularly used that is called the individual phase control that is IPC. This scheme was used in the early days when we were using the mercury arc valves. So, it was used that is why it is written it was used in the past, but the most of the modern HVDC control stations they are using the equidistance pulse control. But we have to know what is the IPC and EPC difference, what are the advantage and disadvantage. So, I will also discuss here this IPC scheme as well. To start with let us go for this uh, individual phase control as its name we are controlling the if it is a 6 pulse your converter circuit we are having the 6 valves each valve is getting individual pulses. I mean that no doubt converter circuit the gate pulses are given the individually, but what happens here we are deciding the gate pulses based on the scenario or condition of the network AC side or the DC side each one is getting. Here in the equidistance pulse as its name you are deciding the firing alpha and this 60 degree is given to everybody, means I mean that if alpha is decided here let us suppose it is your 5 degree then and it is given to your valve 1 then your similarly your valve 2 will get after 60 degree means that is a 65 degree instead and so on and so forth. So, here you can say the distance is equidistance I can say here third it is just add here 60, 125 and so on and so forth. So, it is called equidistance and EPC control. In IPC it is not so, we are calculating this alpha, here we are calculating alpha 1, we are calculating alpha 2, here we are calculating alpha 3 individually. So, what is happening with this you can say we are having the symmetricity 
in your output because again we are maintaining the 60 degree for each pulses here it may not so if there is no error in current or whatever the controller you are going to do let's suppose i am talking about the current controller means we are talking we are just measuring the current we are comparing the reference and if there is a, it is a equal so this alpha is fixed it is not going to change if there is a mismatch then alpha should be changed and then if you are using this then it will be decided what should be the alpha for at that instant which is incoming wall and it will be again 60 60 it is a given to all the wall here it is calculated individually and therefore what happens there is a possibility this is coming to be your 5 it may not be a 65 it is may not it may be it may not and therefore what happens you know your DC output voltage you can imagine about your current so we are going to have a various type of harmonics it is not characteristic harmonics characteristic harmonics I discussed here your NP plus minus 1 here we are going to have other than these these are generated when we talked about which is the symmetricity is there in the current so we are going to have some other harmonics in the system and that's why it is not also good so we'll compare so I here I'm going to discuss first the individual phase control and as it is written here the firing instant is determined into individually for each valve that is the phase position of each control pulses is determined separately that's alpha 1 to alpha 6 for each valve and it is related to the commutation voltage again the commutation voltage here what happens this is your commutation voltage of let's suppose valve 3 it is your EBA so it is the zero crossing is to be known so also there is a problem if you are using the zero crossing due to some distortion due to some fault this zero crossing may shift at that time there is a possibility this is here and what happens now your zero crossing is shifted and therefore your alpha is changed so this is also one of the problem here in the individual phase control because it is starts here the commutation voltage it is measuring from your AC circuit and zero crossing is started checked here and once it is there then alpha is start from here but let us talk about the ideal case because we will see later on this is the basically limitation of this scheme so we are talking here we are having the perfect zero crossing here because our supply system is balanced we are blaming it so here we require this individual since we are calculating the alpha 1 to alpha 6 we require the individual phase delay circuits however here it is very easy if you are having this one alpha control you can have a ring counter six pulse ring counter you give this command you are getting the individual 60 60 displays six output but from one counter basically this is a what is a counter it is nothing but is a voltage control oscillator circuit so once you are giving a pulse then six displaced circuits will be available to you and that can be given individually here to the phases because it is a equidistance placed here we require individual for each circuit delay circuit now so in IPC that is the individual phase control there are so many schemes are so many versions of this control was there most popularly there's a two control here that is a cosine control another is a linear control now in the cosine control if you'll see here the pulses are generated at the crossing of control voltage VC and your AC line voltage what happens here we generate some cosine wave and then we equate with your control voltage what is the control voltage control voltage is the voltage generated due to the error in the mismatch of your control a uh, major value with your reference value if you are talking your CC then it is your let's suppose here it is your ID reference setting and then you are measuring here ID here plus minus whatever you are getting here this current difference here there will be some circuit we are getting here VC so the control voltage is directly related with the difference to these quantity which you are controlling if you are controlling your CC if you are controlling constant extinction angle then extinction angle is compared with your gamma minimum reference is this what is the gamma and then we are checking the error so the voltage control here the VC is basically obtained from the some circuit with your required with your actual the difference between these two so what happens here in the cosine 
here this is your reference, this is omega, and let's suppose this is your cosine wave. This is your cosine wave, and what happens your Vc, if your, your Vc here is compared, this is the Vc signal, there is a some change, if Vc is 0, so your firing pulse is here, maybe omega here, we can generate it. Now, this cosine, again, I can say is an inverted cosine or a regular cosine, waves can be also used. Means, this can be reversed here and then we can just shift your alpha is from here or here. So, we can have the various versions here and basically, your alpha, once this is a zero crossing of Vc, here we can say your alpha is this value and the pulse is generated. So, this is your pulse. Once here, the Vc is equal to your cosine of the wave. So, your alpha, this value is measured from zero crossing. Here, not zero crossing is the cosine of maximum value. So, this is your alpha. Then, what happens? The pulse will be generated. And again here, it is going to be this. This is another pulse for valve 1 because it is, now it is 180 degree. Here, the 2 pi is there because this one will be coming here again after 360 degree. So, this is, let us suppose you are talking for the valve 1. So, the, this voltage cosine is compared with your control voltage and wherever it is equal to this, a pulse is generated. And now, the pulse again, the duration is 60 degree, it can give, it can give the sum, even the magnitude is smaller magnitude till your valve is fired. Now, from this equation, we can see that your alpha here or you can say the Vc is equal to your Vm cos alpha because at this alpha value here, the value of this voltage will be that this is a cosine curve, cos cosine omega t. So, here is a I can say Vm cos alpha or you can say alpha will be nothing but your the Vc upon Vm cos inverse from here we can get it. Now, this cosine control, now you can say why we are taking cosine? It is very advantageous because we know our this voltage equation, the output voltage, it is a function of cosine. So, it is a cos alpha. Now, here from cos alpha, if you are putting, we are going to get some constant of this Vc. So, our output voltage here is you can see it is a proportional to its control control here this value V c. So, you can see this control scheme results in a linear transformation it is giving a linear transformation characteristic it is a linear one. Now, if you are going for another control that is a linear if you are going to use instead of cosine in that we are going to compare. In this one linear, here you can say alpha is directly proportional to your the voltage control if you are taking, but your this voltage equation becomes nonlinear. Only problem here is that you can see the output voltage is independent on the change in the AC input voltage. This is the advantage. Here your output voltage is independent of change in here the AC voltage EM, etc. So it is advantage, but here this is a very, very difficult when alpha is 0, it is very sensitive to Vc. You can see at here, if you see, it is error is very, very high because even the small value of Vc, suppose your here it is, you can see if Vc is changed, alpha is a drastically changed. It is a cosine wave characteristic. Here it is almost linear in this zone, but in this zone, you can see fine here the sensitivity is very high. So, even though there is a small error in the I can just I explain here this is your V c. If there is a small change here, you can see in the how much change in the degree is huge change. So, the error here you can say due to this V c change, it gives high inaccuracy, especially when alpha is 0 at this point. So, this is the drawback of cosine, one, but it is a linear one, it is independent of voltage. This equation is there is no E m involved here. In the linear, if the transformation is no doubt it is a nonlinear, but the error here it is within one degree. 
and these two schemes were basically used in the as I again said that it is a in the old mercury valve valves and now they are not used due to the problem that here they are we are not going to control the individual one by controlling the individual here we are going to introduce so many other problems like uh, interharmonics and other harmonics in uncharacteristic harmonics not here with this one and this may even though lead sometimes harmonics instability to, to the your controller. So to compare here but advantage just you can see here how it is going to to be done. You see there is here the different the phases is all the six are there. Here we are taking this is a only one phase and then we are calculating the zero detector this where is the zero crossing and your current here this is the major current and this current is compared basically here this is the switch is as I said if you are shifting from rectifier to inverter then the margin is changed. So it is open it is a rectifier so this is there and by the amplifier we are getting some VC. So this VC as I said we are getting now this we see from here zero crossing here you can say your zero crossing is a starting. In this case basically the our as a measurement here is a from zero crossing from here. So once it is zero then we are going to invert to take the cosine wave. Means once it is measuring zero here then cosine is generated here. So it is still measuring the zero crossing here and then with this we see we are getting the gate pulse for the individual we are generating either cosine wave or we are using your linear circuit. In the linear circuit what will be how it is varying? Let us see the characteristic here. In the linear circuit it is a simple AC sinusoidal and this is your AC wave here we never use the cosine. Here your this value we are changing here with this one linear linearly and your VC this is your VC and this is your basically at this point the pulse is generated and this is your alpha. Means once it is zero crossing is detected then we use a linear generator here for this complete cycle and wherever this VC is intersecting that is going to generate the pulse. So that is why here in the circuit I wrote here this is your Vc is your k into alpha basically. This is alpha here this is a changing alpha is 0 this is some slope we are generating some constant and this is your characteristic. So based on here your Vc is directly proportional to alpha when alpha Vc is 0 alpha is 0. Similarly for the another cycle here this is again we are going to have this oh sorry and this is your VC and we are generating the pulse here. So this is a pulse for this again this pulse is for 80, 360 degree ahead. This is for valve 1. Similarly we can have for the valve 2 and so on and so forth. So this is a linear because you can see this is we are using the VC and this linear circuit. Earlier we were using cosine with your VC comparing together. So in the linear this is a linear this is alpha this some slope and then we are comparing and we are getting the alpha and this alpha you can put and you can get this what will be the your output voltage. The major advantage of this scheme is it gives the highest voltage. For example now the question why it gives the highest voltage. In this EPC all the valves are getting the pulses of the 60 duration. Let us suppose if we have to change the alpha, we have to let us suppose increase the alpha. If you are increasing this alpha, let us suppose for alpha 1 it was 15 degree, alpha 2 you are going to have 18 degree, alpha 3 maybe something degree here. Means you are individually calculating for all this here for in IPC. In IPC means for individual phase control we are calculating alphas for all the valves individually. So this will be the alpha 2 will be of course plus 16 no doubt 
means we are just if you are measuring from here instant from 0 so this is fire at 15 degree then 60 plus 18 means this firing instant of that from we are calculating is this 18 degree so what happens and in epc what we are doing it is 15 it is 15 plus 60 it is 15 plus 60 and so on so forth sometimes what happens even though you let's suppose for here you are calculating 18 degree and remaining are 15 degree it will be again 18 degree 18 degree and so on so forth here if it is reduced suppose you have fired at 18 later on the voltage is controlled our current is maintained now your angle here it has come to our original value means if your current vc is there changed what happens your alpha will be changed now it depends upon whether your current is increased or decreased that can be visualized by again that writing that equation let us prove this how this voltage in this case output voltage will be more we have this equation this is id this is your video r cos alpha minus your video i cos gamma here rcr plus rl minus here rci i hope this equation is here correct now let us say your due to this voltage increase here our this voltage is increased if your voltage is increased what will happen this value should reduce means alpha should increase once alpha is increased let's suppose in beginning alpha naught was 5 degree alpha naught was 5 degree now due to this increase now alpha nu should be let's suppose 8 degree or 10 degree whatever some value has to be increased to maintain the current once it was just calculated at that time this pulse for alpha 1 to alpha 6 we are giving at the 8 degree here it is 8 degree plus alpha 2 we are getting 60 plus 8 in the case of epc mind it equidistance because 60 60 it will be displaced now if you are using ipc here no doubt this alpha 1 here is 8 degree once this is a fire now what happens this this value is now going to be reduced so the error is also going to reduce once the time is coming for alpha 2 this value is going to be reduced so at that time here you will find this degree may be 7 degree because it is the error is going to be minimized and finally maybe you can again in the same cycle you have gone here up to 5 degree now you can see if you calculate the voltage here it is less because more alpha here it is less alpha sometimes here means average output voltage in this case will be higher compared to your epc so this is the advantage of this but it has a greater problem with its characteristic harmonics uncharacteristic harmonics that is going to be generated here due to this we are having the unsymmetricity in the output voltage and also the currents are we are having so many harmonics so the major disadvantage I can say here is the harmonic but some other disadvantages like due to the fault, distortion etc. The zero crossing is one of the big problem because this based on the zero crossing whether it is a linear circuit it is directly using here zero crossing and this is generated based on the zero crossing and even though in the cosine wave if zero crossing comes we generate a cosine reference angle re reference voltage will shift and this may result in the uncharacteristic harmonics here as well means your this h n plus here this is your characteristic harmonics h but here uncharacteristic harmonics we are talking other than these and that's why here it may cause the harmonic instability especially in the weak ac system now the weak ac system means if there is a small fluctuation it may be the severely affecting your voltage and magnitude a strong system means even though drawing the power the voltage and frequency is almost unchanged so we here system if there is a small problem load increase or something voltage will change very fluctuating so weak ac system the 
at the frequency where the filters impedance and the system impedance in the parallel what happens there is some resonance and the harmonics instability may occur. Therefore, what we do to avoid this we have to use more filters not only here fifth and seventh for the six pulse are 11 and 13 we have to go for some other harmonics filter as well and also we have to put some damping resistance to damp out the harmonics oscillations in the circuit. So, these are the major problem and nowadays that is why these are not used in our modern HVDC link. So, let us go to our this equidistance pulse control and let us see how it is visualized and what is uh, what is the main concept behind this scheme. Here as said no synchronization of control pulses with applied AC voltage there is no synchronization here because here all are you can say the different values are calculated here you are calculating only once remaining are the pulse are generated without any problem and that is why it is used in the modern SVDC links it produces the pulse rate at equal interval of here that is your the pulse here it is your 1 over AFP. means the interval of the time duration of this pulse. How come? You know this is omega t if it is a 6 pulse you are talking. So, omega t is the 360 degree. So, if you are going to have the 6 pulses. So, the duration of each pulse here we are going to have that is how much? 2 pi by we, this is in if we are talking in the radian here is not degree in this 2 pi. So, it is a 2 pi divided by p. So, duration of each pulse we are talking here this is a p is number of pulses in the 2 pi if it is 6. So, it is a 60 60 degree. Now, your t will be here omega and I can write the twice pi 2 pi f this is normal frequency and we sorry this is a p and we are getting here p plus in, uh, p into f. So, the duration of each pulse is here that depends upon here F naught and the P that is here I have written means once you are calculating the firing instant then that here that difference that is a 1 upon F into uh, 1 upon P into F naught it will be that distance is automatically calculated. So, I am sorry here it is 3 schemes methods are written basically there is a some modification of this method it is called pulse period control is very similar to the pulse here in the, these schemes. So, that is why here I wrote the three methods, but now here I am going to only discuss the two commonly used methods here for this equidistance pulse control. First one is your pulse frequency control that is a PFC and another is your pulse phase control that is called PPC. The third was basically it was the pulse period control which I am not going to discuss and it is almost slight modification of even though there also will find some modifications people have done to again achieve our the better objective. In this method as already we describe and here I just I try to convince you that this method gives low DC output voltage, but it is a successful even though in VKC system means there is a instability problem is avoided, but no doubt we will find here it is the EPC schemes also results in higher negative damping contribution especially to the torsional oscillation. The torsional oscillation especially arises when if you are having some thermal power plants. If you are having some of the harmonics which is entering to the mechanical system there is a some oscillation in the and uh, torsional torque will be there due to that matching frequency and that torsional normally it is called sometimes we call it sub synchronous resonance in the AC system. What is this? To know this it is a if you are having a thermal power plant you know it is a big big masses are there means we are having our you will see the thermal power plant this is your high pressure turbine. So, although it is a high pressure, but the size is small. On the same shaft we may have our intermediate pressure turbine on the same shaft here we may have our low pressure turbine. 
and then we are having our big synchronous generator. So all these three, three, one, two, three, these are the mechanical, here our electrical system is start, but still this is a mechanical system because it's a rotating mass. Huge, bigger, even though very heavy rotor along with the, you know, turbine blades here. Pilot exit rows. What? Pilot exit rows. No, yeah, that is even though some here, even the rotary for excitation of this also, that is a some machine, some, some weight is there that is even the excitation system and also even though they are on the rotor itself and you can inertia is changed. But these three here, they work just like a spring mass. You know, whenever you are connecting two masses with the, some shaft and the shaft is not of having the infinite stiffness coefficient, so what happens, they are just just like a spray. So each here we are having one critical frequency. If we calculate this is a whole system, you will find one frequency here F1, one frequency between this and one frequency here between this I can say 2 and 3. These frequencies are especially lesser than 50 hertz. If you, if you are having here the 50 hertz system, you will find these values are starting from 2 hertz, 2 hertz, 250 hertz in between. So any frequency which is, let's suppose you are having HVDC link here connected at this bus and that harmonics is entering here in this system. The rotor which is rotating there is induced EMF and that torque here is matching with this frequency, then what will happen? The huge torque oscillations will be, uh, torsional torque will be developed in opposite direction and that may cause damage to your shaft. So this is called your torsional oscillation if it is, this frequency is matching whatever the frame frequency entering to the system. Even though if you will see in the actual power plant, even though they are just starting synchronizing this machine, they never is stop at these frequencies. Now what do you mean by frequency? It is basically rotation. You know the 50 hertz is 3000 rpm. So for this frequency, you know what is the speed of the machine where you have to not stop. So since we are starting from zero, no doubt here up to 3000, these frequency, this is RPM, means this is your 50 hertz. So starting from your zero to the 50 hertz, certainly these frequency will lie here. So the operator for the power plant, once this frequency is coming, they never stop, they suddenly just move the machine to this from here to here. If they can stop here, there is a huge oscillation or there is a, you know, vibration on the soft when the machine may go off because they are on the bolt and huge torque will be developed. So these are the basically critical frequency just I wanted to tell what is the torsional oscillation because if it is happening here, then the frequency is matching huge torque is developed and that torque may even the damage to your soft. So this problem only occurs if you are having a power plant near to that one, otherwise it has no problem because it has a negative damping. Now, let us start with now the first part that is the pulse frequency control, the PFC and how it is going to generate it. Here the frequency of the control, voltage control oscillator, we require our oscillator circuit. We have to have our VC, means we are giving this control voltage and based on that your, this is you can say this is whole scheme is your voltage control oscillator. Voltage control oscillator is nothing but it is a comprise of an integrator, it will have a comparator and then it will have a pulse generator. And once it is generating, then it is giving to a ring counter and it is shifting 60 degree automatically. Because it is the equidistance, once alpha is calculated here, then for 1 it is a alpha, for 2 is alpha plus 60, for 3 it is a 120 plus alpha and so on and so forth. So this is a ring counter and it is given to the individual valves to this here. So the frequency of the voltage control oscillator VCU is determined by the control voltage. Control voltage VC here is basically arise due to the mismatch, arise due to the difference between the your set point and your actual point. If it is a current, then current mismatch, means what is your reference setting and what is the actual current flowing in the link, if there is a difference, VC will be some value, if otherwise this will be zero. So this is your voltage control oscillator which is generating and we will see here we are using some gain to stabilize it, that gain is also important and we are using some biasing signal 
here to we will see this biasing V1 is also important. If this V1 is 0, this is unstable system. So, from here, if you are having V1 and Vc here, that is summed together, then we are integrating here and then we are comparing with the V3. V3 is a basically a signal that is a T by 6 because it is a 6 pulse converter we are giving and this is a some voltage it is a divided in that one and that is a compared just I'll come to that and then once it is a compared and then at that instant when both will be equal this value and this value is equal the pulse is generated because always the comparator means is a comparing two signals once it's zero then the signal is generated and and we'll see here in the next slide so the mathematics equation that we can write here as I said this is your integration here this term is equal to V3 and finally we can say the K1 the V is equal to this we can this is the dt between this Tn minus 1 instant to Tn because we are talking the next instant here to here the Tn minus 1 to n and we can see right here the V3 Tn minus Tn Tn minus 1 and finally we can say V3 into the PL because this is the duration T n minus 1 to T n is the duration of the pulse and already we derived here this duration here basically this is nothing but it is your T n minus T n minus 1. So this is the duration of the pulse and this is 1 upon P f and if you are putting this here this value 1 upon P f is the P f here it has gone means the P is your pulse number F naught is your base frequency and V3 is a voltage which is a, that is a going to be compared. So, we are getting this expression. In this case, you can see it is a directly related to your this F naught. F naught is your the base frequency, but it does not correspond to your actual operating frequency. We are calculating this instant with the base F naught f naught in intermediate the f naught can also change means the frequency of the system since we are talking of 50 hertz f naught means it is 50 hertz but the frequency of the system can change here it is not taking account of that so for that we can have some modification but before that here we can just discuss about how this pulses are shifted or it is going to be generated so let us see this figure in this figure how the pulses are generated here this is your V3 which is going to be compared and this is the VC is here you can see the VC is some change. Here there is no VC, VC is 0. What happens in this your voltage control oscillator is a ramp circuit is generated. The ramp circuit is generated here and then when V3 is coming here it is the pulse is generated here. So in the normal case when the v, VC is 0 we are getting you can say the 60 degree here this pulse and uh, finally here we were getting like this. But if there is an error in your whatever the controller you are using for current controller or CA controller here, the VC will have some let us suppose some positive value. What happens this has increased because we are adding here with this V3 because V1 is added, V1 is the bias circuit which is integrated that is basically the ramp circuit. So you are adding here, now you can see it is going to be here integrated and now this is a, it is going to be at this point it is going to be generated here basically this is the V3 and V3 is equal to here the V1 and it is going to cut here and the pulse is generated is more than 60 degree. Because the VC is more means what happens your current is more you have to delay it. For, let us suppose you are using the CC. So in this case here your this value the T6 plus some Tx is going to be added this is the V3 and then we are comparing here and your pulse is generated. And Similarly, then again we are having the 60 if it is a decreasing exponential here, the alpha is changed accordingly. And the firing you can say this is the control pulses normally here is the shifted. And we are believing once this is a shifted the current is this value which is going to be delayed and it will be going to reduce it. Because even the one alpha is delayed output voltage is going to be changed. And once output voltage is going to change here you are your current the whatever the mismatch here it will be going to adjust it. So, it will be decreasing and finally again we are getting here. It will be more clear here from let us see 
why we are going to have the V1 circuit, uh, V1 uh, the bias element. From this equation, we can now you can see here if in a steady state condition your Vc is 0. Then from the previous equation, we can find this K1 is your V3 Pf0 upon V1. Now, if this V1 is very small, let us suppose your bias is very small, what happens in the steady state? this k1 value is very very high means you require very huge gain and if this v3 here v1 is 0 this is becomes infinite so you cannot have without this your v1 if the v1 you are not using directly you are using your v3 uh, vc and you are competing with the v3 your circuit will be unstable so that bias is required that can be proved from here because this value is almost every time most of the time it is 0 unless until there is a change in the, your settings or your actual value. So, this gain is which is you require very high gain and you require infinite which is not feasible means that your controller is in, uh, not uh, satisfactory. So, in this case we require some bias voltage and that is basically added with your VC and then we are integrating it. So, that is why here I question why the V1 is required at all why not directly where from VC we can use this. In the next we will see we we are not going to have the, even the v1 in this fashion the your directly your voltage uh, pulses are generated proportional to your vc in the pulse phase control your the pulses are directly con related with your vc it is not related to the v1 the problem here again i am going to discuss the frequency change is not taken care of in this case because f0 is there it is a nominal frequency and hence with the V3, if you are resetting this, you have this should be also V reset. Means what happens? Your ramp is there. You have to reset here. That's one also because this is a 50 50 hertz. Means, uh, sorry, this is a your F naught. If you are using the 50 hertz, your ramp which is calculated for the 60 for the six pulse because one cycle it is a 360. If the frequency is changed, now this period is also going to change. So, once this is a reset means you have to reset this again and then you have to measure the frequency F naught and then you have to use it. So, after one cycle means for one cycle you cannot do once you are using F naught it is F naught and then next cycle you have to measure the frequency and then you can change it only. To here to the have the frequency correction this here this Ainsworth suggested the frequency correction control where this is a we are not in this one what happens the harmonics is not integrated in this frequency control what he has changed you can see the change is compared to the previous one here your vc is not integrated means what he has suggested this is your v1 circuit here this is your integrated dt here your this comparator is there it is your comparator and then we are having your the pulse generation circuit here your this is your vc and we are having your v3 they are just added together and then this is compared here now the difference you can see what happens earlier we were adding v1 and in the period v1 and vc here and then we are we are integrating here again is a t n minus 1 to t n and now we are comparing comparing here. So, in this case what happens you can this integration value is equal to your v 3 plus v v c. The advantage of this if there is some fluctuation in the v c here it is going to be integrated here and that may cause your some instability problem that is why here it is called this this scheme is a better stability because here the control is not integrated this control value the vc so he said why not we can add here and then we can compare because this if there is some fluctuation here that will be taken care that will not that will not reflect here because it's not integrated integration means if there is error it is keep on adding so with this we can derive here equation and you can say the k1 is here again we require v1 the bias circuit is required voltage because both are same and the same logic applies but only here the advantage in this correction here your this vc is not integrated and the vc can be changed with the frequency here 
in the earlier if you are using the VC, what happens if frequency every time is changing, it is the integration create lot of problem. But here, whenever the VC you are using, the VC can be corrected based on your frequency correction as well, because it is not going to be integrated. And then we can use the frequency correction here in the VC. So this is a some modification of the previous one, that is the, your pulse frequency control and it is basically the mostly, uh, most popularly used control scheme. Now another one, another one is called the pulse phase control. Here in this scheme, the train of pulses are generated and that is directly proportional to your control VC. The in this case, it is very fast because here the integrator characteristic is not used. Now you can see here the integrator is there, but this integrator is only to generate the ramp. We have to have a ramp, some charging and discharging is taken care. Here the charging and discharging normally we use a capacitor, and then charge and discharge so that we can generate some voltage here for use of your comparison purpose. To see this, let us see this diagram and then it will be more clear, see it here. What happens your the plus and minus the voltage on the reference here, we are having the ramp, this is the integrator which was used. Here it is just you can see at this point the pulses are generated, where this is equal to your the positive and this one value, this is a charging here, we are happy. Now let us suppose your voltage is increased, voltage means control voltage I am talking, due to again this voltage will change due to the mismatch in the error. So once let us suppose this is increase, it was 0 here, this voltage is added VC. Now what happens, now you can say the charging is more increased here and this point it is going to set and this is the delay here you can say this change in this alpha, now it is coming here. Because the pulses are generated here, earlier it was expected to generate here, but due to this change now we are having this plus and plus minus going to be here and then we are having, so this is the delay here, more than 60 degrees. And then again, in this case, you can say now this again 60, 60, it is going to be there. And it is equidistance, you can see. Means only this is a shift here once we find VC is there and we believe that it will take care. Let us suppose in the later duration it is reduced, then this will be further reduced here and it will take care. So here it is very fast and as there is no integrator, integrator here is a ramp circuit generator that is a very, very fast. It is we are not con integrating our control voltage at all, we are not controlling the bias voltage at all, only we are generating the charging and discharging of the capacitors. And how you can say the pulses are generated and with this circuit. So here that is why this is the circuit, here also we are using the control voltage oscillator and again once the pulses are here coming out and this is we are going to use your ring counter to generate for remaining and then we can give for the remaining system, remaining valves of this rectifier circuit. Now here let us go for your, see how whole control philosophy is realized because these are the schemes which I explained that it is to generate your alphas, simply nothing else I said we are generating the pulses for the valves. And objective is to control either current or to control your constant extinction angle. So you can see this is what we are doing here, we are measuring the current of this, let us suppose this is your rectifier end, rectifier is basically used to control the current, it has to maintain the current in this link, constant current and this is measuring the current here and it is a comparing with the reference value as usual. Here whatever this error is there, we are just using some current controller amplifier because this error may be very less. So we have to use some here first order some transfer function for this controller and then we are getting some voltage here. This voltage basically generating your alpha. Once this alpha is generated here I, that block is not written because there is the VCU is there, alpha once is there, we are right now measuring what is the alpha because how, what was this alpha it is generating here, alpha, what was the alpha, if there is a change then again we can change its status otherwise we can make it constant. So this is this controller your FCO is basically 
is checking your current measurement of alpha, then it is of what is the VC you have created. If there is no, then no need to go for the other change in the firing pulse. It will be the same. If it is there, then it will try to increase slowly. Because alpha must be shifted, sudden change it is not possible. We have to alpha shift slowly and then it is because that is why here there some transfer function will be there. And then it is generating the pulses for remaining 6 as well at that same time, equidistance. And then it is given to here. And once it is given, your current again it is measured and it is basically whole circuit is. So, this is basically the loop for your constant current control. So, if this is your rectifier which is maintaining constant current, then the current will be checked. If it is going in this your extinction angle control means inverter zone or you are talking our inverter control, you see how it is. Here what I have done here, I just added another block. Here we had all these things as usual. Here it was like this only. In the previous one, the constant current controller, if you are using simply without any extension angle control, this will work. This will, uh, if you are using this, this will work. If you are using this, this will work. Both will not work together. As we know, that either it will work in the constant current or it will work as CEA. So, this we cite. Now, if you are just changing in the CEA, this will be here coming back and we are calculating the here it is not R, it is a gamma basically, gamma naught, what is the minimum value. It is a comparing with your what you have generated and then again this controller will try to adjust your gamma and finally, it is coming for all the inverter end voltages. So, this is basically the CA and the CC control together in that control loop. Later on, we will also see it is not only individual, we will see the whole comprehensive controllers including your CC, including your CA, we will also see how the VD call also going to be implemented and when it is going to be bypassed, when it is going to act. So, the control philosophy of any HVDC converter station is very, very complex. It is not so simple that we are writing the block diagram because in actual realization of each block require a huge smaller, smaller circuits to get it fast, accurate and there is no noise here and there, we can have it. So, in the next lecture, we will talk about the various controller like what well, suppose you want to control the power, how these current and the CA angles controls are going to be visualized and we will also see the complete your sending end and the receiving end converter stations, how the controls, the all other controls are clubbed together are basically implemented. Thank you.